Hey there. So my next guest is really awesome. Like he and his family built this business around bringing gamers together to be able to compete with each other. But then like he took it to like a whole nother level when he saw like this giant need in the market for gamers being able to explain their credentials as gamers and like um, whenever I'm interviewed by someone like the, and whenever I interview people, like the first thing I do is get their gaming credentials. Like he built an app to do this. So he's going to talk about his business. He's going to talk about this app that he built and like life as a gamer. So I hope you guys enjoy this one. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the Gamerpreneur podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Bradford Carlson. So you have a very special guest with us. I have Michael Crossman of Claim Your Fame Entertainment. How's it going, Mike? Good. How are you? It's a beautiful sunny day in Las Vegas. How about yourself? It's a beautiful day here. Nice and cool. There was a, a big heat thing here in, uh, in New York, and then it kind of broke a little bit, so it's nice. Okay. Yeah. So, Mike, I'm just going to get right into it. Why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. So, uh, like I said, I'm from New York. I'm from the capital, which is Albany. Uh, a lot of people think, you know, the capital is the city, but uh, we're up in New York, upstate New York. And, you know, we're about two hours away from the city, but two hours away from Boston, um, two hours away from Syracuse. So we're like in the middle of everything. Um, about five years ago, I started a company called Claim to Fame Entertainment. Uh, I've been working on, you know, bringing esports to the capital region of Albany, New York. And, uh, working with high schools and colleges to really show what esports can do with students, but also on the entertainment side. Uh, we host a weekly event for Smash Bros. Uh, we do different events with uh, like Overwatch and League of Legends. Uh, so, yeah, we've really, you know, for the past five years, have really started the trend of esports in this area. And it's actually grown to, you know, a couple other companies doing it. Um, not a lot of people know that upstate New York is a gaming hub for like game developers. So we have uh, done some stuff with them at bigger conventions with colleges. And uh, recently my newest project is claim your fame, the mobile app that we uh, were launching to help gamers and streamers launch their brand and kind of create their brand or enhance their brand. So uh, yeah, it's been a, it's been a long five years. I mean, it's, an uphill battle, especially up here, but uh, I think everything's going pretty well. And I was glad to find like-minded individuals on Facebook, like yourself. Uh, I saw your interview with Jimmy. Uh, I've talked to him. He actually has, he signed up for the app. And so we talked about different things about uh, working together. Um, I saw he was representing the nerd brand gaming um, clothing, and I've actually reached out to them to sponsor an event. So we're looking to hear back from them. So it's funny just to see it come full circle with some people and uh, I really like what you're doing and uh, showcasing the light of what people you know, like ourselves are doing, trying to you know, promote the community and enhance the community and doing it one step at a time, you know, not trying to rush it, trying to build the foundation for it and then bring it to the next level. Certainly. Well, thank you so much. I'm glad, you know, my show was able to help somebody, right? And <laughs> yeah. I want to apologize. It's Claim to Fame Entertainment. I was just, I was just looking at your app beforehand, you know, trying to set up my account. It's Claim Your Fame is the app. So. Yeah, yeah. It's so, it's, it's very tricky. Like, so we started Claim to Fame Entertainment five years ago, um, just a DBA. And then we actually got an LLC for it and we got our logo trademarked and we got uh, Claim to Fame trademarked in the esports space. Uh, that was just recently this year. And then the claim your fame is like something that I developed with uh, a separate team, but claim to fame entertainment is promoting it because it kind of just works hand in hand. And so the team of claim to fame entertainment is like marketing and promoting claim your fame app. And it kind of coincides together. Fantastic. All right. So I want to get into it. But before I do, I ask everybody a single question. I'm going to ask you just like I ask everybody else. Sure. So on a scale of one to 10, 10 being high, how yeah. weird are you, Mike? Uh, I would have to say, <laughs> uh, well, I have a twin brother. So that automatically puts me at like a seven. Um, I think he's a little more weird than I am. Uh, but I would say like a seven or an eight. I, I think uh, he's a little bit more weird than I am. So 
Uh, yeah, I, I would say like seven or eight. All right. You got the, uh, the, the twin telepathy thing going on? <laughs> uh, yeah, we do actually. Uh, it's more, it's not a telepathy thing. It's more of a, like a gesture or like a motion thing. So like if we're in the same room and he gives me this look, I kind of know like, all right, we need to get out of here. We need to like do something in this situation. And it's just like a slight gesture, you know? And uh, a lot of people think, oh, you're reading his mind. Uh, no, it's just I know him so well. He's like my shadow. So I can like say, okay, we're, we're uncomfortable in this situation. Let's get out of here, you know, or whatever the case may be. So cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this is the Gamerpreneur. I'm going to need your gaming cred. When did you first start playing video games? Uh, I've, I've been playing games forever. It started with like the Mario for the Nintendo. Um, I guess my dad introduced me to it. It was something that my brother and I could do together. But back then, the game right behind you, actually. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, and we actually had Kung Fu, too, which was kind of funny. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, back then, you know, everything was you play and then the next person would play. Like, it was never like a co-op thing together at the same time. So my brother and I would have to switch on and off. And... Uh, you know, we did like the co-op games where we had to fight each other, but we never did anything where you had to work together to accomplish different things. And so that's, you know, that's the, the first games were like, I would go first and then he would go second or, you know, and it always, it was always that, that way somehow. Uh, but yeah, that, I guess it would start, I mean, how old am I? I'm 32. So seven or eight god geez <laughs> a long time ago uh and then that translated into more of like competitive gaming so like we got into like sports games like madden and like fifa um and really like excelled at that because we got to practice against each other all the time you know playing against each other playing against somebody you always get a different view of how the game is played and so that just translated to like you know halo and really into like more of the competitive gaming but on, on a casual side nothing very like super competitive like super pro like going pro uh because there was no scene for that back then but it didn't exist now yeah but uh you know having a little tournaments in our basement everyone bring their system tvs uh so always always had something to do with gaming you know i was big into sports i did wrestling and football uh but then like it would always get back into like who's better at this game than somebody you know so that's uh that's like my journey in gaming and then i i saw the esports thing and it really like the competitiveness really attracted me to it and then the community feel of like the players the gamers the uh, coaches and the whole structure of it okay fantastic all right so what are you playing now if anything i know you're a busy guy yeah so when i have time so i stream every saturday night on my uh my claim to fame channel on Twitch and I just do it for our business, but we're really big into like league of legends, like team based games, uh, you know, call of duty, uh, the modern warfare, you know, just the uh, war zones. Uh, I, I really like the battle Royale games. Um, I just like the competitive nature of them. You know, it's not, it's just like, Hey, let's just have fun. It's more like trying to get that W and that's like, really what I like working as a team to accomplish something. So, uh, so I would say, yeah, League of Legends. Um, I was big into World of Warcraft for a while, uh, ran my own guild and you know, that's time consuming. <laughs> so Horde or Alliance? Uh, Horde for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I, you're an Alliance guy, huh? <laughs> I am always an Alliance. I tried Horde. I just, I just couldn't get into the storyline. Yeah, I mean, I like the Alliance feel of, like, being a human, you know, and bringing that human aspect to the game. But, like, the fantasy aspect of being a big Torrin was kind of, like, awesome to me, you know. And my brother and I, you know, we played it together, leveled together, and then started a guild and ran it together, so. I mean, you guys had to deal with Baron's, Baron's chat. Oh, God, yeah. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, rest in peace, Baron's. <laughs> but, like, yeah, I mean, I think – that you know, and they, there's a competitive feel for that. You know, they have the mythic dungeons now, where they have the, com the competition for it. The PvP was always competitive, and I, I like seeing how they kind of translated into a little esports feel too. Uh, and then obviously Blizzard with Overwatch. Uh, I, I really love Overwatch. What they did with it, it was kind of like a different kind of shooter. 
but like the competitive and this the competitive scene for it was like amazing i think and obviously sure. the league, so. and it's only improved i mean i remember season one of arenas i i was a prop warrior i made gladiator so I mean, oh yeah <laughs> i didn't take my skill back then <laughs> yeah 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 and you know it's funny it's and they back it too that's what i like about it is like activision blizzard they back like their esports and it's hard you know for like smash bros on the other end you're just like you're just getting validation from Nintendo to try to do it, you know, and, but you, you see where it comes from, you know, the, the company that made the game is supporting it and it really shows and they show, they talk to the community and get the community feel. So it's really evolved from that. Absolutely. Okay. One more kind of gamer related question then we'll get into uh, claim your fame and claim sure. your fame entertainment. So um, desert Island scenario, you get one game of power cable and ethernet cord. What is it? Uh, <laughs> I would have to say, wow, uh, probably World of Warcraft. There's so much to do, and, like, if you can have a sense of community on it, it's not too, like, uh, you know, when you run a guild or you're in, in a community like that, you know, they almost become, like, your friends online. So, you know, at least you have an outlet that way. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm right there with you. I'm like, my Warcraft. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. So, Mike, what, what's your professional background? How did you end up starting Claim to Fame? So, I actually have been retail, retail my whole life. Uh, I've been working, like, customer service jobs. I ran, like, uh, I guess it would be, like, a convenience store slash, um, like, gas station. Uh, but it's local to only New York. It's called Stewart. Uh, the company's called Stewart's. And uh, I really started my, kind of my professional career there with, like, management. Uh, working up from just, you know, a part-time to full-time to shift supervisor to running a store. And then uh, I moved into Dick's Sporting Goods and kind of just moved on that way. And so I was, was basically customer service retail my whole life. Uh, I went to school uh, for sports management uh, and marketing, and I really liked it. Uh, I did mostly online classes, so it was kind of, I worked full-time, did that. And uh, really liked it, and really saw how esports and sports were translating at that at that time. It was around four or five years ago, six years ago, and then that really gave me the idea of we saw how esports was moving like through Asia, and then in Europe it was starting to like catch on, and they had the European Championships, and and then like the U.S. had a scene, but it wasn't anything developed like it is now. And we're like, oh, how can we get ahead of this? You know, uh, how can we start a community or enhance the community, really? You know, because the community was always there, people getting together, gaming. But we were looking to how could we enhance it and bring more of a business aspect to it. And, you know, it was tough when everyone had to bring their own equipment and, everyone had to leave with their own equipment. So we just thought of, you know, getting the equipment and then making sure that people are just coming and enjoying their time. Um, so it really started off with a simple break of doing like a midnight release with uh, GameStop. Uh, they were having like a Halo release party uh, for, I think it was Halo 3 at the time. And we brought a bunch of Xboxes and we set them up and we ran tournaments and Domino's like delivered the pizza and they like, gave out merch and it really gave us that sense of like, Oh wow. Like people want this, you know, I mean, GameStop was backing it. It was, uh, you know, there was 180 people there for the midnight release. So we had like a huge turnout. Um, so we really just turned that into a business model and said, Hey, you know, let's provide this at different venues across, you know, uh, the capital region and see like different games and have people come out. Uh, the smash community, you know, they're, they did everything themselves and we just enhanced that by, you know, giving them a space, a nice space to play and providing them the equipment so they didn't have to haul everything around. And that's been our biggest, our biggest business is the Smash community really like getting behind us and showing, hey, you know, this company really is trying to help us out uh, okay. or enhance us. So what kind of challenges did you face when you were first starting this up? Because I mean, you know, a few years ago, GameStop was like, yeah, where else did, would you go to? have an event like this yeah i mean that uh, the biggest thing is venue and size for spacing so like around here we would have to go to like a restaurant that had like a venue for music 
So we would go into like a stage area and set up all our equipment and then promote that like Monday night at this venue. So our biggest, our biggest hurdle was probably marketing because essentially we would be marketing for that specific venue. And if they didn't back it or if they were just like, oh, okay, cool. Like, you know, you, you rent the space from us and then they don't even really market it uh, or they didn't even know how to, it was essentially us just pushing our own marketing onto them. Um, so the biggest uh, challenge was gaining, like getting the space and marketing it because if we're here this week, next week, we might be somewhere else because it wasn't consistently at the same place. So uh, getting behind, like trying to advertise, hey, we're here. And then next week we're here. That was the hardest thing when we got started because it wasn't very consistent on like, oh, we're here, we're here, we're here, we're here. It's like, um, but uh, we got lucky and we actually partnered up with a, co a venue and we've consistently been at one venue for uh, about a year now uh, before all the this pandemic stuff so uh it was really nice i mean that was probably the biggest challenge is because you know you want consistency with the events you know you want to you know where everything runs you know where the internet is and uh changing venues all the time you had to like make sure the internet was up to speed so you could stream it you had to make sure you had enough space for all the setup enough power enough power outlets so that was just a huge thing to book one venue fantastic all right, so how did this transition from putting on events and tournaments to an app? And what does the app do? So the app was, so we were, we actually had a big investor. And so our goal was to actually create our own gaming, like esports arena, similar to those stuff out West that you might be familiar with. Uh, like uh, esports arena out in California. Uh, we kind of wanted to mimic that on a smaller scale here in the capital region. With the, with the gaming hub and kind of just we knew uh, the, how the gamers came out to all the events, we said, oh, you know, our goal with Claim to Fame Entertainment is to create our own gaming space, uh, get our own space, you know, rent it out and uh, have this nice little esports arena for everyone. So uh, we had an investor that was interested and he said, you know, how are you going to market yourself? How are you going to get people to know who you are, like your brand and everything? And I was like, Oh, that's a great question. Like no one's ever asked us that. Like, how are we going to get our brand out? Because our brand is well known in the capital region. But if you go, you know, even to the city, some people know us, but they don't know us like they know us in the capital region. So that was a great question. So I said, you know, I had this idea a few years back of creating like a gamer profile for, for players. And then we could essentially use that gamer profile to at our gaming lounge so that, you know, they had a profile, they just check in and all their stats and everything and all their social medias would be all together. Um, and he really liked the idea. So we started spitballing and the app is essentially a social media app that promotes and showcases like what you've done in, in your space in the social media space. For example, uh, Facebook, Instagram, you know, Twitch, Twitter, those are all, Everyone might have one, but it might have be a different username or it might have like, you know, for example, you can't fit claim to fame entertainment on most things. So you have to abbreviate. And uh, if you're trying to like give a business card to somebody, you're just like, huh, you have all these different names. Well, we thought if we had one central hub where everyone could see all your social medias together and see your like essentially your brand, uh, that it would be easier to connect with that person and connect your brands to each other. Cause then you can see, you know, what their social media accounts look like and what your social media is like. And you can see if it's a match similar to what you're doing with your interviews, you know? And I think that uh, currently we're in beta, so it's still, you know, work in progress, but uh, the whole idea was, you know, cl you're claiming your fame, uh, you're building your profile and when you level your profile, you are showcased more. So if, if a team or a sponsor is looking for someone in that particular area or in that particular game, they can reach out to you and say, hey, you know, we like your brand. We see what you're at. You know, uh, we want to tie our brands together or we want to help you get to the next level. And that's what this app is. Its goal is to help people, you know, connect via their brands and then help them grow to the next level, whether it's tying their brands together 
or, you know, offering a sponsorship or, you know, uh, someone's uh, uh, opportunity in the esports field. That's wonderful. All right. You said it's still in beta, right? So uh, when's it come out? Yeah. So it, it's in beta. It's live beta. So we have people out right now. Um, we're updating things, you know, uh, there's a six part process of things that we're updating. Currently we went through our profiles and just upgraded those, the, the feel, the look. Um, the next couple of things that we're gonna be working on is people sharing more material. So if you have a clip that you want something to share, you know, uh, and, and showcase it, we're gonna allow you to showcase that. Um, if you want to uh, like form a team or have like an organization and people listed in it, uh, we're going to add that feature so that, you know, if you have uh, a team that wants to go live on your stream, it will, it will list all your team members and link the stream. So uh, just features like that, that are more gonna, that are going to help the community. Um, but those are things that we're working on and just in different phases. Uh, currently right now you can sign up and create your profile, put your social medias out there, start leveling your account. Um, the way we level, and it's just very simple, is creating an event or and checking into events. Similar to like, um, I think it was called Foursquare, the app, where they had like different things where you could check into. Uh, this is very similar to it. You know, you see an event, you go to it, you can check in, and you level up your profile, showing that you're active in the community. Um, and then the person that created the event they also gain fame and experience points based on how many people show up and uh, when they create the event. So it gives them an incentive to create the event and to share the event on the app. Fantastic. Okay, so this idea, I've, I've talked to quite a few people who've, who've done something like this or wanted yeah. to do something like this, I should say, but a lot of them just haven't started. So what makes you different? What, what unique skills or talents have you or do you possess that were able to get you to this point as opposed to everybody else sitting on the couch wishing they could? Yeah, I think it was, uh, I mean, I had the idea for Claim to Fame Entertainment and, you know, with a, a, a bunch of my friends, uh, buddies that game that were really into it. And it was more of a, you know, a feel of getting, giving back to the community and seeing that, you know, there was opportunity to grow and that really just drove me to say, you know, we really want to bring this out to people that maybe don't have a chance to do it or are looking for a community to connect with. And if you, you know, as a gamer, you know, there's this stigma that, you know, you meet your friends online and that's it. And there's nowhere where you guys can meet up and game. And you obviously that's changed with these esports arenas and uh, different like gaming lounges that you can meet up now. And that's what our goal was to create a gaming lounge so that you could get people together and, you know, you could form relationships with people, whether you're gaming together or talking about games or, you know, going to see a, a, a you know, the midnight release of a new game and then gaming with them. So it really was about building that community because I know a lot of people are just like, oh, you know, a lot of my friends live in Cali because we game together and all this, but really bringing that in together locally uh, because everywhere you go, there's gamers and they just need to find each other. And so that's where we were motivated to say, Hey, let's, uh, let's make a safe, fun place for people to enjoy gaming together. Okay. So my, uh, my goal for the show is always to give as much advice as I possibly can to my audience. Yeah. So say someone wanted to follow in your footsteps of building some sort of organization like you have, maybe not necessarily direct competitor, but something, some business at What's, what steps would you say to start? Uh, the, the first step I would say is make sure that you have content um, because with content, you can create a schedule with, with releases and consist, you can be consistent on releasing stuff. Uh, whether it is content like, you know, creating videos or creating marketing or having like uh, just like a Facebook group, you're, you're, you're getting people you're, you're kind of getting people that, that, that information that they need on what you're doing and where you're going. You know, uh, I think it's very simple on like, if you have a goal with something, you just, you share your goal. This is what we want to do. And this is how we're going to do it. And we're going to create content for it. We're going to be consistent with it. And we're just going to make sure that we're doing it, you know, all the time. 
and 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 that's the biggest thing a lot of people get down because there's a lot of no's in gaming uh there's been a ton of people that say no we're not interested in that or uh you know we had a beautiful venue and we wanted to expand it more like put a more of a gaming feel into that venue and they were like no we're not interested in it but we kept pushing on and we you know we found a venue that was that wanted to back it you know and i think it's very it's just knowing where you want to go and how you're going to get there and just having the content for it fantastic i love that advice okay how are how are you making money right now like how exactly do you do it so i make money well we make money our business makes money via our streams so our subs you know just like anybody else that uh does the live streaming or the gaming uh, we have a patron that we have uh, we do a we do a show where we do like movie reviews game reviews simple stuff fun stuff locally um, and we go live on Facebook and we talk about that uh, so we have uh, we have like a guest appearance you know on our patron where you know we have like different tiers where it's like hey thank you one dollar helps us out uh, five dollars give you like our, our our discord our private discord and you get the game with us on our stream nights and then we have like different options where you could be on a show, you could promote your business. And uh, so we make a little bit of money off that. I think it's cool. We do a little uh, gaming fan art sometimes. Um, so that's one avenue. The other avenue is uh, Twitch. And then um, our events, which are obviously postponed right now. But, uh, you know, we, we get anywhere from 40 to 80 people out on a Monday night or and, and really, you know, come out and play smash and that's our big like you know our big way of making money so can i can i like break that one down is it registration fees is it merch sales like, yes yeah, how are you yeah. sponsorships uh so what we do is we charge like uh, a venue fee so we have a venue fee and a tournament fee uh anything collected for the venue fee is for the equipment and us getting paid you know our, our income and then the tournament fee is a separate fee that gets paid out to the players so depending on how many players are there they get paid out so a very simple esports formula of like the venue and the, the tournament fee. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. Now, so you've been doing this five, six years, you said? Yep. Okay. If you go back in time, you could talk to Little Mike. Say, Little Mike, this is what you need to know in order to just supercharge the next five, six years, make it just so much better. What would you say? I would say... So esports is so ambiguous with like on there's no formula of where to get to like be successful. And I think what I like how I said it before with the content, you know, being consistent, kind of like, you know, creating your brand and and being proud of your brand, you know, whether you are, you know, doing like gaming reviews or live streaming or putting on events. You got to, you got to own that and you got to know that that's your space and like no one else can take that away from you. So, you know, I think when you're first getting into it, you know, you think you have to be like a ninja or a doctor disrespect, or you have to be like some of these pro gamers and you have to be good at the game. I think it's really just creating your own little space and, and just owning it and really showcasing like what you're about, because a lot of people get caught and I have to be like, you know, even when in sports, you know, I have to be like Mike, you know, uh, Michael Jordan, not me. <laughs> I remember that one. I remember that one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I think, you know, um, I would say if you're trying to get in the gaming and esports space is really identify who you are and, and be proud of it and then just showcase it, you know, and, and listen, there's going to be people that are saying, Hey, Oh, he, someone else is doing that. Or, you know, I'm glad I'm, I'm happy for that person, but you, it's really what you're doing, how you own it and how you are going to showcase it. And that's what really led to that app. You know, I think uh, everybody has their brand. They just, maybe they haven't found it yet or they need a little push or a little, a little help, you know, and I, hopefully this app helps them show like the work that they've done. You know, maybe they only have a couple hundred followers or a, a thousand, but you know, you did that and you created that. So guess what? that you put that work in. So you're, you know you're going to go somewhere if you keep being consistent, you keep putting your content out, and you just keep being you. You keep showcasing yourself. And a lot of people just get hung up on like, oh, I'm not like this. Oh, I'm not too funny. I'm not this. Just be you. And, and people will 
you know, you, you keep being consistent with your stuff, people will watch you. So, or be a part of you. <laughs> okay. So where do you see claim to fame going in the next uh, couple of years? Uh, well, I think, I think we're going to be rotating, uh, depending on everything with the events. Um, I mean, we've booked a couple big events with uh, high schools, but sadly, because of this, we really had to take a break from doing events, but uh, they gave us an opportunity to really push the app. So I think the app is, I think the app is going to be an awesome tool for your guys like us and our, in our opportunity of creating our own identities, our brands. And I think with the claim to fame entertainment, I think, you know, we, we, we have shows books and we've been booking stuff left and right when we get, when we get back going. Uh, so hopefully we're still, you know, we're doing a little bit bigger. We're, we're going out and uh, teaming up with more people, but I, hopefully the app is helping people grow and we get some good reviews on like how and how it's helped them grow and how it can, how we can do better to make, uh, allow people to grow. That's great. All right. So Mike, I want to pull back for a second. If I can, I want to talk about you. Sure. And I'd like to humble you if I can, because you've talked about all this amazing success you've had, all the wonderful things you've been doing. Yeah. And I believe that we learn the most uh, about ourselves and what we can accomplish through our failures, not our successes, because our failures teach us what we did wrong as long as we're willing to learn from it. Right. Yep. So I want to know what is your biggest failure? Uh, I would say professionally or <laughs> personally. Yeah, either or. Um, professionally, I would have to go with you know we we uh, in the esports world, you know you're you're always trying to team up with people that because there's opportunity, there's enough to go around opportunity wise, and we teamed up with uh, a couple people and it kind of went sour. Um, it seemed like it was more of a money, like grab a money grab, you know, like put on this big event, uh, one time thing and try to get people like in the door. And we wanted to help them because they were a startup and it really backfired on us because they got a lot of negative reviews on, on their business, their event, because they knew it wasn't authentic. It wasn't community feel. And it, it kind of set esports back up in this area a little bit and our company because, you know, we helped them, you know, power, uh, claim to fame, helped them uh, set up the event. And so it was just a dark day for esports in the capital region, a dark week or so. Um, but, you know, we learned a lot from that. You know, we learned that not everyone is in it the way we're in it. You know, we really want to have that community feel. Um, and it, it's just the way the business is, you know, some people are in it for the money. Um, if you're in it for the right reasons, the money will come. I say that for any business, you know, um, as long as you, you have the right thought about it in the right direction. Um, and then I think, you know, I think, I guess that would go in a personal level too, because claim to fame is like my baby. Um, you know, when you start a business, that's like your, your child, you know, you would care for it. You're spending so much time with it and you just, it, it, it hurts you to see somebody else trying to like take advantage of that. And it was just a, it was a kind of a wake up call to show you that not everyone's in the space for the right reasons, you know? So true. Absolutely. All right. What's something that you're working to improve on in yourself? I'm trying to improve on my uh, interview skills. <laughs> uh, I, I think, uh, sometimes I ramble a little too much, <laughs> but I've been doing a lot of, uh, like I did a lot of uh, talks with high schools about building your brand, building your social medias, uh, you know, positive use in social media. So getting in front of people and talking about something that you're passionate about is a lot easier. You know, it's a lot easier. And, and it, sometimes you ramble and you flow too much, you know? And uh, so I'm trying to get better with like staying on point and staying, you know, consistent with, with the dialogue on, on, on certain interviews. Well, you're doing fantastic. <laughs> All right. no, but Mike, this has been a wonderful interview. How do people find you? Where, where are you at on social media? How do they get uh, you? Yeah. So <laughs> our easiest way is our website, claim to fame, Uh, it has our link to our app. It has all our social medias there. Uh, you know, like I said, Twitter's weird because you can't have claim to fame entertainment. It's too long. So that's C2F gaming. Um, but, I think you can find all our links through our website. Our Facebook is Claim to Fame Entertainment. Um, you'll see our logo. It's a star with a, a C, 
So the C is a said sign. Um, <laughs> the funny story is like, it, our, our story is kind of like rags to riches, you know, and claiming your fame. So the C started off as a scent sign inside of a star. And then I guess the scent sign started disappearing, you know, the little two things on the top and bottom. And it, now it just became a C. <laughs> so, but the, the original logo was a scent sign inside of a star. So it showed like a rags to riches story. Um, I like that. I really like that. I wish it would come back. Um, I think it's trademarked that way too. So, but yeah, I think, uh, so claim to fame on pretty much any, if you search claim to fame entertainment, we're going to be probably number one on everything that you search for. Beautiful. Hopefully, hopefully number one. <laughs> okay. Mike, thank you so much for coming on before we like finish, finish. Sure. Is there anything else you want to say or anything I didn't ask that you think we need to talk about still? No, I think I, I think we did. a. I think you did a great job. I think, I think I didn't ramble too much. So I think it was pretty good. Uh, I liked watching your videos and seeing all the people that I've like talked to and worked with or going to work with. And it just shows like, you know, like that grassroots feel of like building a community. You know, I like what Jimmy's doing. Um, I, I talked to the hero.live guys. Um, so like, it's funny to see those, you know, on your website and just seeing people that I've talked to. Um, and those guys are great guys. So, oh, yeah. you know, you getting a chance to interview and talk to them. I think it's awesome just to see it because a lot of people don't see behind the scenes and, and they don't really know like sometimes how, what it is to go through all this stuff. So I really like what you're doing and that's why I reached out to you as well. Um, and I think uh, the app kind of coincides and helps people like, you know, if you have a dream and an idea, as far as long as you keep going, you can get it done, you know, and I, I've been fortunate enough to have the opportunity to get that, uh, get that app going and have our business be pretty successful. And that's so wonderful. Well, Michael Crossman, thank you so much for coming on. We genuinely appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. And with that, I'm going to remind everybody, don't be just a gamer, be a gamerpreneur. <laughs> <laughs>